Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Indian School of Physics. Guys, this is Nitin here and today I have come up with a very amazing problem as promised. It is fusion of optics, mechanics, SHM, elasticity and modern physics combined. And uh, this problem has more than 15 concepts. And guys, uh, like last time, uh, you can unlock uh, two amazing problems on mean free path, heat and thermodynamics and uh, cylindrical lens with cavity with 1K likes. This is the target of this video. And as we will be achieving uh, 350 likes, I'll be re releasing all these uh, videos one by one. And guys, again, liking, sharing and subscribing is love. So please keep sharing the way you are doing already. So it, it will be really, really helpful for me. As this video is brought to you by Indian School of Physics and Unacademy to, uh, together. Uh, name of this problem is one problem of 15 plus concepts. So guys, my current courses on uh, Unacademy are course of INPHO Foundation and for JE Advanced 2023 and uh, Emerge for JE 2023. In uh, INPHO Foundation, we'll be starting circular motion and uh, work power energy. And uh, in Emerge, we'll be starting with kinematics. Advanced problem uh, solving course for JE Advanced 2021. Uh, in the its second part is uh, uh, almost over with one class uh, left. And uh, part three will be starting from 15th of July. And advanced course for JE 2022 in uh, Hindi is going on. And another course on rotational mechanics is uh, already going on. Guys, you can access my theory courses, which are of advanced plus plus level for boosting your JE preparation. You can unlock these courses on Unacademy using my code Nathan Sir. You can visit www.unacademy.com. And guys, uh, trust me, physics will never be the same again. So here is the statement of uh, this problem. It's a very long uh, problem and it took a lot of time in framing but finally I, I, I could uh, get success in substituting nice values so that the calculation uh, part is uh, quite easy for us. So I will read out the problem. A cylindrical beam of cross section area A0 and intensity I0 is incident on a system of thin biconvex lenses L1 and L2 as shown with radius of curvature R for each curved surface of the lenses. The refractive index of lenses are uh, 4 mu and 13 by 2 mu respectively. The surrounding medium of lens have refractive indices of mu while the medium between the lenses has refractive index of 2 mu as shown in the figure. The distance between the two lenses is 3 by 5 r. To the right side of the lens L2 there is a perfectly absorbing surface in the shape of a disc of mass M0 rigidly fixed on a rod of mass M0 and length L and the cross section area of uh, A0. The rod is having Young's modulus of Y and the other end of the rod is rigidly clamped. Neglect the effect of gravity and aperture diameter of lenses in the disc is A0. So there is a series of problem here. Find the shape of wave fronts and uh, find the intensity variation, magnification produced by the lens system, force applied by the beam on the disc and uh, maximum deformation in the rod, elastic energy stored in the rod in equilibrium and time period of oscillation of the disc. So guys, as you can see in this uh, diagram, we will uh, try to break this uh, problem into small, small concepts. And uh, then one by one, we will be going. So first thing is, let's see what exactly is going to happen at the uh, lens system one. So mu, four mu and two, two mu. So one logic will be single surface refraction formula, single surface refraction formula, single surface refraction, single surface refraction. Uh, like this, it will become uh, slightly lengthy. So what I will do is I'll be using modified lens and uh, its focal length uh, logic here. So suppose uh, there is a medium of mu1, mu2 and mu3. This is how these interfaces are present and uh, radius of curvature of the surfaces is R1. Then the effective focal length of uh, this system I can write final medium by F is equal to 2 minus 1 by plus of R1 and 3 minus 2 divided by minus of R2 like this you can do for any number of system. So this will reduce your calculations uh, very quickly. I have discussed uh, these concepts in very much in detail in uh, optics course uh, at Unacademy. So those who are uh, part of it can uh, definitely check and learn this concept. They are uh, very superior concepts. Similarly, the modified lens equation, uh, if object is at a distance of u and image is at a distance of i and image is placed in medium mu3, object is placed at medium mu1 and lens material has refractive index of mu2. 
in that situation i can write the modified lens equation instead of writing 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u i will be using this equation mu 3 by f is equal to mu 3 by v minus mu 1 by u and you can check if first and last medium is same mu 3 and mu 1 are equal our equation will be reduced to 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u and just now i have calculated the value of mu 3 by f which is uh, 2 minus 1 by plus r1 3 minus 2 by minus of r2 so i'm going to use these uh, logics here so you can check for lens 1 if i try to calculate its effective focal length uh, so 2 mu the middle medium and 4 mu minus mu by plus r and 2 mu minus 4 mu by minus of r so when I simplify this, I get F1 is equal to 2R by 5. And we can see the beam is uh, parallel to the principal axis here. So it will be forming or converging at a distance of plus 2R by 5. Its focal length is 2R by 5. <clears throat> and for lens L2, if you calculate uh, this uh, focal length similarly, I can uh, you can check the values. I'm directly using, uh, I'm using this formula here and this one all right so for lens 2 you can see in the diagram in the diagram uh, we can see uh, the final medium is uh, mu and lens material is 13 by 2 mu and the first medium is uh, 2 mu so final medium by focal length and this is like lens uh, material minus uh, first medium by plus of r and final medium minus lens material divided by minus of r and when we simplify this, we are getting F2 is equal to R by 10. And now I'll be using the modified lens equation. So final medium by F is equal to final medium by image distance minus initial medium uh, by object distance. So object distance is uh, 3R by 5 minus 2R by 5. All right. So when I substitute all these values, you can see how nicely this is coming that V is coming at infinity. So what is the meaning of it? Final image from the lens system is at infinity. What is the meaning of it? Beam comes parallel, converges and then behaves like an object for the second lens. And then again, after refraction from the lens, it becomes a cylindrical beam again. All right. So ray diagram wise, you can see these uh, light rays are coming at, at a distance of 2R by 5 here. All these light rays are converging and after that again uh, this will behave like object for the next part and they are becoming a parallel beam of light again. But there is one catch here. If you are ignoring this you may make mistake at this step. So if you see this uh, tan theta part directly I can say this radius divided by this distance and this radius divided by this distance. So I can find out <coughs> that finally the beam radius becomes one fourth or the beam uh, beam area becomes one fourth and beam radius become half because you can directly see here this is 2 r by 5 and this is r by 5 so if this is uh, r this will become r by 2 and if this is a it becomes a by 4 i hope this part is clear to you and you would have enjoyed this and if you are little uh, careless you may make mistake in this problem here so beam diameter becomes half and area of the beam becomes one fourth times but the energy carried by the beam remains same. We are assuming 100% transmission that means there is no loss at any surface. So in that case intensity of beam after the lens system after passing through the two lenses initially this energy incident is uh, I naught A naught and uh, finally this is i dash into a naught by 4 so i can say the new intensity finally after refraction from both the lenses is 4 i naught now we can talk about uh, shape of wave fronts and uh, intensity variation so this is a, a cylindrical beam so plane wave fronts are coming here and this beam is converging at this point so and this is like a cone it will generate a cone in this cone it will be taking this these type of curved surfaces because the light rays are converging so this is how this uh, shape will be in the plane uh, we can say circle kind of thing but uh, actually they are not circle they will be in the form of spheres similarly here light rays are now diverging here it is acting like a object for the next lens l2 so this is also like uh, spheres expanding spheres you can say and after passing through again plane wave fronts will be forming so intensity wise if you see for plane wave front intensity remains constant and 
<coughs> sorry here as they are going uh, light rays are converging you can say maximum intensity will be at this point so in this part intensity is increasing and in this part intensity is uh, decreasing as we are progressing and finally intensity becomes uh, 4 i naught maximum intensity will be at this point here it is i naught so this kind of behavior intensity will have i hope this part is clear to you otherwise normally if you directly feel it you may make exactly you may get exactly reverse result of it so now the normal magnification is just uh, the radius uh, ratio i by o we can uh, apply so it is 1 by 2 and aerial magnification is area of the beam uh, after refraction and divided by area of the beam before refraction so that will give you uh, 1 is to 4 sorry here i have written 4 actually it is 1 is to 4 that is 1 is to 4 I hope till here everything is clear to you the next part is force on the beam uh, force by beam on disc 100% absorption case uh, we are taking so radiation pressure concept I can apply IA by C so this is IA by C so you can check intensity has become four times but area has become one fourth divided by C so there is no change at all on force however radiation pressure will become four times because of increased intensity so have these ideas in mind uh, this is a very tricky topic radiation force and uh, uh, those who can access my theory courses they can see um, a large uh, variety of problems or uh, different applications i have discussed you can uh, check those courses also now the final part of this problem is uh, the elastic rod we can treat it as a spring this is the derivation of it i'm not going to explain this i'll just use k effective is y a by l it's a pretty common uh, concept so most of you will know however you can refer this proof also if you want so this rod will behave like a spring and a rod has mass so it will be like a case of a spring with mass all right so now uh, once that force will uh, come so maximum deformation will be when zero to zero state so equilibrium will be f external divided by k and x max will be double of that it doesn't stop at equilibrium it will have maximum speed block will have maximum speed at uh, equilibrium <clears throat> so it will cross that point and double of that it will cover so x max is 2 f naught by k effective and x equilibrium is f naught by k effective so if i substitute the value of k effective and uh, f naught value is i a by c i'm going to get x max as 2 i not a not l by c y a not and x equilibrium is half of it i not a not l by c y a not after this we can uh, uh, see here elastic potential energy at equilibrium i can directly use the formula potential energy wise i'm using linear variation so here it will exactly behave like a spring half k x equilibrium i can substitute so when i substitute the value of x equilibrium i'm going to get this answer i naught a naught square l by 2 y a naught c square this is going to be the answer for uh, elastic potential energy and finally this time period of the disk you need to remember this concept that constant forces will never change the time period of shm but they change the equilibrium position so spring with mass its time period is given by 2 pi under root of mass of the block plus mass of the spring by 3 divided by k effective uh, those who are interested in uh, the proof of it can check my courses so finally our answer is going to be t is equal to 2 pi under root of m naught plus m naught by 3 divided by y a naught by l this is going to be the final answer for this problem there could be many more problems but uh, it took so much time so i stopped here i think you have enjoyed this problem a lot and if that is the case please leave a like share this video with others and uh, help me in reaching the target so that i can bring more amazing problems for you thank you thanks for watching it